Shalom, family. The soul food topic on tonight is how the nation of the earth will be blessed. And this will be part four of the lesson. So before we talked about Abraham, talked about Sarah, Rebecca, and Isaac, and the promises, the blessings that were made to them individually, as well as um, covenant, an everlasting covenant that was made with their seed after them. And I brought out a lot of scripture to show how the nations would be blessed. And we're just going to continue on with the same uh, train of thought and, and talk about Jacob and the promises that were made to him and his sons and how the nations will be blessed through Yahweh Shai, who is of the seed of Jacob, okay? So I'll have you go first to Genesis chapter 27, verses 28 and 29 and 37. So Genesis chapter 27, verses 28 and 29 and 37. Okay, Genesis chapter 27, verse 28 and 29 and then 37. Therefore, Yahweh give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be master over thy brethren mm. and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Uh, curse be every one that curseth thee and blessed be every one that blesseth thee. That's the same kind of language that was given unto Abraham. His blessing from the Most High God, as well as Isaac himself, because this is Isaac blessing his youngest son, Jacob. And it's funny that Jacob, out of his own mouth, says to one of his two sons, he only had two sons, Esau and Jacob. He says to his youngest son, believe it, it is Esau, right? But speaks to him and gives him a blessing and says, um, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be lower over thy brethren. You would only have one other brother. So the father is saying that you're going to be lower or master over your brother. Your brother is going to be your slave. Okay. This is the blessing that Isaac spoke unto Jacob. That your elder brother, unbeknownst to Isaac. Okay. But your oldest brother will be your slave. Okay. And let thy mother's sons. She only had two children. So if you're talking to the one then by process of elimination, this has to apply to only the other child, Esau and his posterity, okay? And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee to show you of obeisance and respect and honor. Curse be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be every that every, and be he that blesseth thee, okay? Jump down to uh, 37. 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord. So, like you, so you see, Isaac right here confirms that Jacob is going to lord over or be master over Esau. He said, I'm sorry, son. I already made your younger brother your master. He's going to rule over you. He's going to have dominion and authority. Before I forget the thought, here in verse 28, Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of the corn and wine. Now, we read uh, the other day about Isaac in, what was it, chapter 26, verses 1 and 4, and that Isaac, at one point in time, went and dwelt in the land of the Philistines with King Abimelech. And there was a great dearth, a great famine, a global famine, and Many of all the inhabitants of the earth were having trouble finding food for themselves and for their livestock. But the word says that the Most High was with Isaac and blessed him. He sowed his seed and he was able to reap a hundredfold, a hundredfold in the midst of a global famine. This was the glory that was on Isaac. And now Isaac, being of old age, is transferring the same blessing that was on his father on him, now Isaac is giving to his son, Jacob, okay? Because it says, because of that, going back to Isaac again, because of the blessing that the Most High put on Isaac in the, in, during a famine, it caused him to wax great, to wax rich, 
amongst all the people, kind of the way it was with Joseph. Okay, he advised Pharaoh that you know, in the time of the famine, you'll sell these, you'll sell the food unto the people. They'll be in such dire straits that they'll sell their land, they'll sell their home, and then they'll make themselves bond servants to you. And in that way, Pharaoh became, you know, the 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 shareholder to all the real estate in all of Egypt. And this is the kind of the same thing that Isaac did. He was the only one who had food. Everyone else entreated Isaac in order to survive. And through that, they blessed Isaac and he increased with riches. Now he's transferring this blessing to his son and saying in verse 28, that God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Okay, so that you run out of nothing. That your, that your corn stalks, your ears of corn, and your grapes for the wine shall not dry up. You shall not have a drought. You shall not have a famine. But they shall be abundant. They shall be plenteous. Okay? And everyone that curseth thee, as he goes on to say, shall be cursed. But everyone that blesses thee shall be blessed. So if you do as the Egyptians did to Joseph, or as the Philistines tried to do to Isaac, well, it says Abimelech told him to get lost. So they really didn't show him that much respect. They blocked up the wells that, that Abraham had built. Okay, so you see really to, uh, the duality of it. You see the negative aspect with Isaac and you see the positive aspect with Joseph and Pharaoh. Okay, so if you bless, if you entreat this anointed chosen people, then you will be blessed. If not, you're going to be cursed and you're going to die of starvation. Okay, this is how the nations of the earth will be blessed, plain and simple. Read verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy master, thy master, uh -huh. and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. Meaning you, <laughs> you and your children, mm -hmm. you will be his slaves, his servants, his slaves. Go on. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. Uh -huh. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? With corn and wine, with luxury, with opulence, okay? With the abundance of all things. Corn and wine, okay? Usually, if you're a poor man, you know, you have to make do with maybe a little, uh, a, a little piece of bread and water. But a man that is doing well, can have corn and wine, all right? So what else can I do to thee, my son? So I gave Jacob, your younger brother, everything. All I can do is declare prophecy that you shall have a blessing, but it shall not come from God. It'll come from your own hand. By violence shall you get your blessing. And, you know, it speaks to the attitude of Esau anyway, because... Because Esau was envious of Jacob and the fact that he received the blessing, that he also, you know, was able to uh, finesse the birthright off of, off of Esau. And so when you think about it, if Esau was jealous and upset and disappointed and angry and frustrated because of Jacob and how he got something that he believed belonged to him that was supposed to be rightfully his, naturally, you're going to go about trying to make some sort of retribution or restitution for the wrong that you feel. And so that's why Esau does what he does. He, try, yeah, he tries to exact the wrong on him. And you see that played out amongst his people today. Okay, even talking about the incident in D.C. Feeling like they've been done wrong. This is an assault on our democracy. We're Americans. We don't do this. Y'all been doing this for centuries. What are you talking about? This is Esau's nature coming out. Let's read verse 38. Just for those who have watched, you know, these Trump protesters storm the Capitol building and, you know, go on with their thuggery. Let's read about Esau and his actions and how he conducts himself. All right. Let's see if it lines up with the, the conduct of those protesters. Verse 38, and Esau said unto his father, hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept 
39, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be as be the fatness of the earth, and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that oh, oh when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So with the sword and with violence will you get what you want. Okay? All right, from there, we're going to go to the next chapter, chapter 28, verses 3 and 4, 13 through 15. Genesis chapter 28, verses 3 and 4, 13 through 15. Okay, Genesis 28, verses 3 and 4. And Yahweh Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. So, like it. so again, this is the word promise being given to Isaac. This is on him and on his posterity. Read. Verse 4. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which Yahweh gave unto Abraham. I misspoke. I'm sorry. This is not the blessing to Isaac. This is Isaac speaking to his son, Jacob. This is the blessing that he's given to him in advice. All right, let's get down to 13. 13 through 15. And behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yah King Yahweh. I am Yahweh, King of Abraham, thy father, and the King of Isaac, the land whereon thy... I'm gonna start all over. This this is the dream that Jacob had, and the Most High reveals himself to Jacob and talks to him. So go on. And behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yahweh, king of Abraham, thy father, and the king of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So this land that you are sleeping on, I'm gonna give to you and to your children. I'm not giving it to anybody else. This belongs only to you, Jacob. This is the gift that I'm giving to you. This will belong to your children as a heritage, as possession forever. Read. Verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So like you so. Right here, you're seeing this is how the nation of the earth will be blessed. Now, it doesn't even speak on the nations receiving a gift, receiving mercy, receiving deliverance or salvation or anything. It only speaks to the glory that will rest on Jacob and his children, that they will be as the dust of the earth. They'll be from east to west, north to south. They'll be all over the place. And this is how the nation of the earth will be blessed. Read that verse one more time. Verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. So you're going to have a whole lot of children, Jacob. Not just from your loins directly, but posterity. Your heritage shall be greatly increased in the earth. Read. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west uh -huh. and to the east and to the north and to the south. Of all the 12 tribes shall inhabit and occupy the lands of the earth. You shall reign in the earth. Read. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So in thee and in thy seed. So this isn't just talking about, you know, Yahweh Shai and the way the Christians view him, Jesus, and that, you know, through him, you know, love and peace and deliverance for everybody. We're all No, no. He said in thee, Jacob, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So it's showing there a hierarchy that we will be here and the nations will be below. This is how they will be blessed. Okay? All the nations of the earth have known in the past few centuries is tyranny and cruelty. Because the earth has been given unto the hand of the wicked. But in the time in which Jacob shall reign once again, when Yahweh Shai is upon his throne, the earth will not be under a wicked rule, it will be under a righteous rule. Isaiah says that it shall spring forth. Righteousness shall spring forth. Please pick up the chair. 
Righteousness shall spring forth. All right, so this is how the nations of the earth will be blessed. Read. Verse 15, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. So the most uh, high... So the Most High is not going to leave Jacob. He's not going to leave his people. Okay, the Most High has destined to make Jacob his chosen race of people. I'm going to bring you back into this land. You may sojourn, or may sojourn, sojourn, or sojourn. sojourn. Thank you. You may sojourn to another land, but I'm going to bring you back here because this is the land that I have given to you and to your seed after you. Okay, as far as the eye can see, this will belong to you and your children shall increase in the earth. They shall be as the dust of the earth, north, south, east and west. They shall occupy all of this land. Okay. All right. From there, we're going to go to chapter 35 of Genesis, read verses 10 through 12. Genesis chapter 35, verses 10 through 12. And Yahweh said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Uh -huh. And Yahweh said unto him, I am Yahweh Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply speaks to what he told him in chapter 28. Okay, that your seed, your children, your posterity shall be as the dust of the earth. And that only comes through being fruitful and multiplying. Read. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. So this is the blessing on Jacob, that his name has, is no longer Jacob, but it's Israel. That he shall be father of nations and kings shall come of thee. This is the same thing that was spoken to Abraham and Sarah. Okay? Abraham and Sarah. That kings will come from thee. All right? And the scripture, let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me see. Bear with me. Genesis 35, verse 10. Give me that scripture right there. 12. Yep. Proverbs 16 and verse 12. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. So like you, so when Isaac gave the blessing to Esau, okay, whatever he had left, he said, look, son, by the sword and by the violence, that's how you're going to get your blessing, the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. Okay. You're a wicked ruler. This is in your DNA. This is what you'll do. Okay. But it says here in, in chapter 38, I'm sorry, uh, 35, to Jacob, that nation shall come out of him. King shall come out of him. All right, read. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, uh -huh. for the throne is established by righteousness. The throne is established by righteousness. So when these righteous kings of Jacob shall come forward, whether it be uh, David you know, Solomon, to some degree, you know, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, Josiah, okay, and Yahawashai, these righteous kings, the throne shall be established in righteousness. Read. Read it one more time. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Read 13. Verse 13, righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. So the righteous king, when he's sitting upon the throne and he conducts his business in righteousness, his servants, the common people, love that king. This is how the nations of the earth will be blessed. 
when there's a righteous king of Israel sitting upon the throne of the entire planet, the nations of the earth will be glad to know they have a righteous ruler. Okay? A righteous ruler sitting upon the throne. Not wickedness, not one who seeks to pollute the air, seeks to contaminate the water, seeks to corrupt the food that we eat, seeks to tax us, seeks to, you know, do all manner of evil unto us, but a righteous ruler. Okay? Back in Genesis, yes, yes. 12, Back in Genesis. 12. Okay, verse 12. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So again, it's reiterated that Jacob, who's now become Israel, is going to receive this land. I promised it to your grandfather. I promised it to your father. Now I'm promising it to you and to your children. You're going to have this land. It belongs to you. I don't care who's in there now. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they seek to assemble themselves and take up weapons and try to fight to defend themselves to keep this land. This land belongs to you and I'm giving it. I'm going to give it. The earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. I'm deciding to give this land to you and you're going to possess it. And you're going to um, dwell in it. All right. So now go to Ezekiel chapter. I'll, I'll read it. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 25 through 28. I'll have you grab Sirach chapter 44 verses 19 and 22. I'm sorry, 19 through 22. I'll read my scripture first. Ezekiel chapter 25 through 28. And it reads, And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant. So what we just read in Genesis wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children. So, you know, we just was reading in Genesis how the Most High spoke unto Jacob and said, I'm going to give this land to you and to your children. You shall dwell here. Nations shall come from you. You shall produce kings out of your loins. Okay? Wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. This is referring to Yahweh Shai. Verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them. And will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. So this everlasting covenant is the same covenant or re... Uh, what's the word I want to use? A renewed covenant. Covenant. It's the original covenant that was made with Abraham to his seed, not seeds, okay, not with Ishmael, not with the sons of Keturah, but with Isaac. The same promise and covenant was uh, renewed and reestablished with Isaac and then to his son, not with Esau, but with Jacob. Now, with all the things that have befallen the children of Israel, we have gone into sin and due to the sin, we're in, our, in us breaking the covenant agreement with the Most High God, he sent us into lands of captivity. But when he rescues us, all 12 tribes out of the lands in which he has driven us, and brings us back to the land that was promised to our forefathers, okay, we shall dwell in safety, and he shall renew, reestablish that everlasting covenant he made so many years ago. Okay? Um, 27, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, when it says be their God, does that refer to everybody? No, the prophet is making it clear. Verse 27, I will be their God, meaning the children of Israel, meaning the posterity of Jacob. I shall be their God and they shall be my people. They not all shall be my people, but they, Jacob. Verse 28, and the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel. So 
Now he's clarifying that there's a separation between all the inhabitants of the earth. You have Israel and then you have the heathen. Israel will be sanctified, will be called his people. The heathen will witness and observe the most high blessing and sanctifying his people. These heathens will not be sanctified or blessed. Okay. 28. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. When I shall dwell in the midst of my people, then you shall know. And this is through Yahweh Shai when his glory will, will be erected and set up in Jerusalem to reign in the midst of his brethren, in the midst of his people. Okay. Yep, go ahead and read 44, that. 44, 19 through 22. Abraham was a great father of many people, and glory was there none like unto him, who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh, and when he was proved, he was found faithful. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth. So here in uh, Sirach, um, again, speaking of Jacob, speaking of the promises that were made in the book of Genesis. And, and it doesn't say anything about salvation to the rest of the inhabitants of the earth. But it says that Jacob will be blessed. His people will be blessed. But that would um, uh, equate to the nations being blessed. Why? Because he would reign, he would rule in righteousness, okay? There would be certain benefits that would be given unto Jacob, and the nations of the earth will receive the residual glory and honor from the blessing that will rest upon Jacob and his children, okay? Even as the Canaanite woman said, doth not the dog eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table, okay? It's the same thing. The children of Israel, the children of Jacob, sit at the table where there is an abundance. And the heathen cannot sit at the same table. But whatever may fall from the table, the heathen can receive that unto himself. That's his. Okay? Because when the Canaanite woman came and asked about Yahweh Shai healing her, Yahweh Shai said, no, I can't do that. It is not meat. To give the children's bread unto dogs. This is what Yahweh Shai said concerning this woman. This heathen woman. I cannot give the children's bread. This glorious bread. I cannot give this to dogs. She said, but can I get a crumb? Thou hast spoken well. I'll hook you up just because you knew your place. I'll hook you up. This woman was blessed. She blessed Israel and she got blessed. This is how the nation of the earth shall be blessed. Is there more to that? Mm -hmm. oh. Therefore he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. Verse 22. From sea to sea. Um, I'm trying to think. So would that be uh, the Dead Sea, the Sea of Galilee to I'm, trying, I'm just trying to envision that. So so it's a, it's a large area. It's a very large area that the children of Israel will occupy. Read. Verse 22, with Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an heritage and divided his portions among the 12 tribes did he part them. So it says the covenant of all men. It's not talking about all the nations of the earth. It's talking about all of his seed all those that come from that the seed 12 line. tribes read that last verse one more time for clarity with isaac did he establish likewise for abraham his father's sake the blessing of all men 
and the covenant. There you go right there too, because the covenant was only made with um, Jacob yep. and, and Isaac and Abraham. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an heritage and divided his portions. Among the 12 tribes, did he part them? Okay. Right, so from there, now we're going to move to Yahweh Shad and how he works into this to this uh, process of how the nation shall be blessed. So I'm going to read Galatians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. Galatians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. And it reads, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham, Verse 8, in the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Okay, so if you just read that without understanding, because we already bring out the scriptures in Galatians chapter 4, okay? In Romans chapter 9, talking about the children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of the promise. This is what it's talking about. And when it's talking about the heathen, you're not talking about the nation's bloodline that are contrary to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but those who have been cast off the heathen. All right? Because it says out of Jacob, right? Jacob only had one nation of people, but he says, nations shall come from you, kings plural, shall come from you. Jacob only represents one nation before the Most High God, but he defines them as nations, okay? When Jacob blessed uh, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's son, he said to Ephraim that you shall be a multitude of nations, okay? Why? Because the children of Israel have been scattered to all the nations of the earth. This is that great multitude John saw in Revelations of every tongue, of every kindred. He's seeing the children of Israel speaking different languages, looking a little different, our features being slightly different, differing from one another. Of all the 12 tribes scattered upon the face of the earth. Okay. But see, Apostle Paul mentions the promise of Genesis now we're going to go back real quick and read it. So Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. This was the promise that was made to Abraham that Paul is referencing. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. We can't forget that part. Now, Paul didn't mention that, but this is a part of that promise. I will bless those that bless thee but I will also curse those that curse thee. Let's not forget also in the blessing that was given to Isaac and given to Jacob, especially Jacob in that. It's like it. I have given thy brethren to be thy servants. You shall be Lord over your brethren, over Esau. Okay. And those that curse thee shall be cursed. Those that bless thee shall be blessed. Getting back to Genesis, verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay? All right, so now we're going to bring some scriptures to solidify that. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verses 17 and 18. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh. At what time? At that time, meaning the end time. Okay, when this age comes to its end, there shall be a new age that will dawn. And in that age, it shall be an age of righteousness where Yahweh Shai is reigning. This is the time that the prophet is referring to. The time of the new age. Read. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it. Uh -huh. To the name of Yahweh, to Jerusalem. 
neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil hearts. Okay, so all the nations are going to come to Jerusalem and know who the Most High God is. Read. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. So there shall be a unification of the two kingdoms that were split under Solomon Rehoboam. Okay, there shall be a unification, a restoration of those two kingdoms under one. Once again, read. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. North to, America. To the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. So all the children of Israel are going to be gathered, right? Out of the lands of the north, out of North America and all the lands we've been driven to in captivity. Be placed in our land in Jerusalem, in Israel. And the nations will gather there to worship the Most High God. This is how the nations of the earth will be blessed. All right, from there, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1, 4, 9, and 10. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1, 4, 9, and 10. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So we read before, was it Ezekiel, where he said, My servant David shall be a prince over them forever. And then it says here that a rod shall stem out of Jesse, Jesse being David's father. So this is referring to the spirit of David, okay? Yahweh Shah, who is the son of David, that shall reign in the last day when that new age appears. Well, Verse 4, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the strength breath, with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So this is how the nation of the earth will be blessed, because in righteousness shall he judge the earth, not in wickedness. OK, not in corruption, not with bribery. Not with deceit and corruption, not, not any of that, but with righteousness. This is how he, Yahweh Shah, that is, will judge the earth. Read. Verses 9 and 10. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. So remember, we were just reading in Jeremiah that the children of Israel will be united, brought to their land, and the nation of the earth will come to worship, right? And this is the established righteous policy that will exist in all the earth. Yahweh Shai is saying they will not, what is it, uh, destroy in all my holy mountain. So the junk that was permitted in the kingdom of Esau, it won't be permitted here. Not when I'm reigning, because he said that he will, he will smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. He's going to reign with power and authority. I wish you would commit some unrighteousness in my kingdom. This is my kingdom. I'm the king. I'm the ruler. I'm the sovereign. I'm the emperor, the czar. Okay? And what I say goes. Read. They shall not hurt nor, nor destroy in all, the, in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. So this is why the nations of the earth who are not Israel shall come to Jerusalem. Because they will be filled with the knowledge of who the Most High God is. They will not go after their imaginations, believing that this God or this God or this idol is the Most High. They will know beyond a shadow of a doubt who the Most High is because he says that. Where, where, where did we read that at? Um, might have been Jeremiah. We just was reading that. That he will establish his uh, sanctuary in the midst of of the children of Israel so that the heathen might know that I sanctify my people, that I will be their God and they shall be my people. This is how the nations will know. They'll come to understand, oh, this is this is a true God. Not this idol, not Caesar Borgia. Yahweh is the most high God. Okay, I get it. I understand now. Read. Verse 10, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Greeks, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. 
So these Gentiles seeking, this isn't the Gentiles of the other nations. This is of the children of Israel who are cast off and became Gentiles. They will seek after Yahweh Shai, and their rest shall be glorious. Read. You said 10. Oh, that's okay. All right, so from there, we'll go to Psalms chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. Psalms chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. I'll read it. Okay. I will declare the decree. Yahweh hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So this is the writer speaking of Yahweh Shai on that great day. So yeah, when we're reading Isaiah and a little bit of Jeremiah, it sounds good, like the nations have come, you know, to Jerusalem, and they're worshiping, and they should be filled with the knowledge of God, and you know, it sounds good. But now we're going to kind of get into the, to the, uh, how you want to put it, the harsh part of the reality of what this existence will be in the new age. Verse 7 again, I will declare the decree, Yahweh hath said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, so this is the father speaking to his son, right? Ask of me, ask me whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, meaning I will give you the other nations as your slaves. Ask me whatever you want, this is what I'll give you. Um, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So you shall have dominion and reign over every square inch of planet earth. Verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Break who? Break the heathen that you possessed as your slave. You shall break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces with a potter's vessel. Right. Oh, like a potter's vessel. 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Eleven. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. So when you see all these nations come to Jerusalem, it's not so much because they they just love God so much now. It's with fear and with trembling. Because Yahweh Shai is righteous, but now he has to exact the punishment. That is due, that is written concerning the nations of the earth. Okay? And everything shall flow through Yahweh Shai and Jerusalem. If you want anything, you got to go to Yahweh Shai and you better come correct. This is how the nations of the earth shall be blessed. You better come correct. You come correct, you can get, you can get the, the, the good of the land. If you come correct. If you don't. Oh, man, you, it's, it's, you, you're going to be messed up, man. You're going to be messed up in that day if you don't come correct, if you don't bring your gift to, to Zion, if you don't bow down and, and, and uh, keep the feast days, the Feast of Tabernacle. If you don't do these things, you're going to be messed up. You're going to be put to death. Uh, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve ye high with fear and, re and rejoice with trembling. 12. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Okay, this is the advice to the heathen nations that are left. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. So you watch Godfather, right? When uh, Vito Corleone or Michael Corleone, they were in power. When those came to ask favors of the Godfather, they would come into his office they would humble themselves and they would kiss his hand to show their, ut their utmost respect. Yes, God, Father, and, ki and kiss his hand. This was a sign of respect. And now the writer is saying these nations of the earth better do the same thing. When they come into Jerusalem, they better have a gift. Okay, Luca Brazzi, what he was... Uh, going over his 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 uh, rehearsing his lines of what he wanted to say to the Godfather because he was so grateful that he was invited to his daughter's wedding. Okay, others brought gifts. You know, the Godfather had done things for them in the past. And they brought a big cake or whatever the case may be to show their gratitude. These is how the nations will be. It's like the Godfather. Okay, they're gonna come with gifts. Oh, Godfather. Yahweh Shai, is there anything I could do for you? Kiss the ring. Yes. 
Yes, O king. Yes, is there anything you need? No, I don't need anything at this time, but I may call upon you one day. <laughs> I may need you to do a favor for me. Okay? Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Okay? You don't want to be like, uh, who is it in the opening scene? You know, when the, uh, the funeral director, I want justice. You know, Don Corleone, give me, give me justice. Like, you don't come to me as a friend. You come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding asking me to kill for money, murder for money. So kiss the son lest he get angry. Humble yourself. Don't speak too much in the presence of the king. Like this, that was a that was a natural thing to do. You know, when you were invited into the royal court, you were on, you only spoke when spoken to. When the royal scepter was pointed your way and you were given the allowance to speak, then you could speak. If you if the king was talking, you didn't interrupt the king. You could be put to death for that. For real, for real. Just like in the book of Esther, you weren't allowed just to enter um just, you know, on your own accord, just enter into the royal court. You could be put to death. You had to have an invitation. And wait until the appointed time when you could enter into the royal court. You couldn't just walk up in there. Hey, yo, dog, open the door. I'm about to go up in there and holler at the king. No, you don't get that opportunity unless the king gives it to you. Okay, so if Shai grants for a heathen to come into his presence, you better come correct. You better have a gift. You better have something and you better be looking good, smelling. Don't come into the king's presence smelling like feet. You better come correct. And the first thing out your mouth is you better be looking to kiss that ring, to bow down and kiss his sandal. Something. You better have tears streaming down your eyes like Malcolm when he was seeing, uh, you know, Elijah Muhammad for the first time. That better be your attitude. Kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little because you can't forget what happened to the entire earth wherein Yahweh Shai was able to um, take the earth as his possession. Every king that came into power and had a global empire his dominion was preceded by a campaign of war. Each king went into war and destroyed the prevailing kingdom before him. Once he overcame that kingdom, he was able to sit upon his throne and be ruler of all. This is the same thing Yahweh Shai did. He vanquished all of his enemies and put them all to death and destroyed them all. Now he's reigning. And you better come correct lest he get angry. Did you forget all the people he killed months before? You better come correct. You know, you come up in the courtroom talking, about, what's good, dog? What's good, dog? Oh, man, let me put, you know what I'm saying? He's going to get up off that throne and murk you. He can destroy you with the breath. Just breathe on you and incinerate you. Kiss the sun lest he be angry and he perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. We're waiting on his return. You see the thing that's happening out here in Babylon? It's not too much longer and we shall be delivered and saved from this captivity. All right, Revelations chapter 19 verses 15 and 16. I'll have you read that. Revelations chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. Okay. Revelations chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. So, Lachia, this is the very same thing that the writer was talking about in Psalms chapter 2. The same thing. John is seeing the same thing. He's beating the nations into shape. Read. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Yahweh. So these are the events 
that will take place first before Yahweh Shai can reign. Before he can sit upon his throne, he's got to rid the war, rid the world, his world, of all evil. He's got to do it. He's got to get rid of all the evildoers and put down every demonic power that has exalted itself on his planet. He's got to destroy it all and bring it into subjection so that he might reign. Read. Verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Uh -huh. King of kings and rulers of rulers. So king of king, lord of lords, if you will. He will be the the, the, the ruling. What did you say? I said rulers of rulers. So he will be the chief power and dominion in all the earth. Those kings that existed under the old uh, world order, mm -hmm. some of them might still exist and said that those kings better humble themselves. But he will be king over them. They won't be able to, you know, veto his his commandments and his policy and his legislation. You can't veto Yahweh Shai. Or even... Uh, impeach. Or you even can't even impeach Yahweh Shai. <laughs> you can't summon the 25th Amendment and try to impeach Yahweh mm -hmm. His dominion, the word says, shall stand forever and ever and ever and ever. Forever. Forever. <laughs> so I wish... That a that a assembly of Edomites or some other heathens will come and say, Yahweh Shah, you know, we've been thinking about it and we think we're going to impeach you and put someone out. What? Destroy you with the breath of his coming mm -hmm. or with that rod he got. Mm -hmm. Not only is that scepter a beautiful, glorious, kingly mm -hmm. instrument, but it's also an instrument of war. Mm -hmm. It doubles <laughs> as a scepter and a bat. <laughs> to bash you upside the head if you come just, you know. Or a wand. <laughs> oh, a wand. Yeah, a wand that all he got to do is wave it and they could disappear. Nah, that's that's too soft. He got to beat them. It's a ride. <laughs> and beat them with it, okay? So before they could realize he'll be already be up out of his throne beating you with a stick, <laughs> okay? You can't impeach Yahweh Shah. He's going to reign forever and ever. This is how the nation of the earth will be blessed. Uh, was that 16? Yes. All right. Last scripture. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 through 30. Thus saith the Yahweh of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. 21. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, Salakia, let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh. And to seek Yahweh of hosts, I will go also. So the nation of the earth on that great day and the time of the new age so say one to another, yo, let's go up to Jerusalem and worship the Most High God. Because it says, as we read, it was in Isaiah as well as in Jeremiah, that um, the knowledge of the Most High God shall be in all the earth. So this is how the nations will know. They don't do that now. They go to their churches. They go to their worship temples and assemblies, but they have no knowledge of who God is. But in this time, oh, they're going to know. Through fear and with trembling, they will know. Because he had, he will beat the nations into subjection. They gonna know he gonna beat righteousness into their brains. Okay, this is how he's gonna do it, and this is how they're gonna be blessed through that. Okay, this is a blessing for them. All right, twenty one. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, "Let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts." I will go also. Twenty two. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. 23. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So if the nation of the earth are going to grab at the garment of, a, of an Israelite and say, We know that God is with you. Then, then that is to say that God isn't necessarily with them. But they do desire to be before his presence. They do desire to worship, but they know God is not with them. God, he said, I will make my sanctuary in the midst of Jacob. I will sanctify myself before the heathen that the heathen might know so that they can do this. Okay, in Zechariah. When they do, when the Most High sanctifies himself in the midst of his people, the heathen be like, yo, that's a blessed people. 
we got to get close. If I, we could just touch the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. I know I can get some of that blessing. Because my crops are dying and my sheep are looking crazy and I need some of that blessing. Let's go up to Jerusalem and ensure that our, our harvest be blessed this year. Let's bring a gift. Maybe, maybe if we find a righteous Israelite and we do nice things to him, maybe he'll put a good word into Yahweh Shah the king and bless us this year. Mm -hmm. This is how the nations of the earth will be blessed. We went through Abraham, Sarah, Rebecca, Isaac, Jacob, and Yahweh Shah. This is how the nations of the earth will be blessed. Shalom, family.